welcome to Lighten Up TV, enlightening, inspiring, and empowering humanity. This is a journey of self-discovery. On this journey, we are in search of answers to the burning questions that have intrigued mankind for millennia. Who are we? Where did we come from? Why are we here? And where are we going? By merging scientific discoveries with spiritual revelations, we will explore the possibility that mind and matter are one and the same in a vibrant field of pure consciousness. What if this eternally expanding field of consciousness is of and from the same source? These revelations that we may actually share one mind in a unified field that expands into the cosmos has the potential to cause a powerful shift in the collective consciousness. On our fascinating journey, we will explore ancient legends, modern discoveries, and emerging truths about the spiraling creative forces that spun this creation into being. From spirituality to religion, super string theory to the Big Bang, from gods and goddesses to angels and aliens, we will dive into the mysteries of creation. Are you ready to lighten up? Starring your host, Suzanne Ross, television personality and producer, inspirational author and speaker. She is a 5D truth seeker and spiritual pioneer on the front lines raising the frequency of humanity. Through her shows, books and events, she has dedicated her life to activating the matrix for global ascension. And welcome to a very special edition of Lighten Up Discussions with Global Thought Leaders right here on the Perspectives channel of SciSpy.tv. I am your host, Suzanne Ross, and I am so incredibly honored to have this precious opportunity to engage in a profound discussion with Global Thought Leader Irvin Laszlo. He has been twice nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize and has authored, co-authored, and published over a hundred books. He has also written over a hundred papers. He is also the founder and director of the Laszlo Institute of New Paradigm Research, exploring and expanding upon the frontiers of science and consciousness. He is also the longtime editor of the internationally acclaimed periodical World Futures, the Journal of General Evolution. Today we are going to talk about the evolution of consciousness as well as the new science of spirituality. He is coming out with a brand new book in March of 2020, and I'm delighted to have an advanced copy. Re connecting to source, the new science of spirituality, how it can change you and how it can transform the world. And so without further ado, I am delighted to introduce to you this extraordinary man, Irvin Laszlo. Thank you so much for joining us today, Irvin. Well, Susan, it's just wonderful to be here. And you are coming to us from Tuscany. Indeed, yes, yes. Uh, this is my escape from the world, where I can be immersed in the world, but in a deeper level, in the hills of Tuscany. I became familiar with you, Urban, with a book that you came out with in 2004, Science and the Akashic Field. Mm -hmm. Always very interested in the Akasha. I was so drawn to your description of the Akasha. So maybe we can start by expanding on that. Uh, the Akasha is Akasha according to the Hindu 
seers of ancient times is a dimension, is the deepest dimension. Swami Vivekananda wrote a beautiful book, several books, but in this book on Raja Yoga, has a very detailed description of the Akasha. And he says that the Akasha is the boom of everything, everything, everything that we feel, everything that exists, everything that we know came out of the Akasha. And the Akasha contains everything, but it's not contained in other things. So the Akasha is the deepest dimension, is the totality of things, really. And this is very much corresponding to the latest quantum physics idea of, of, of the uh, unfolded or, or order, you know, not the, uh, not the unfolded order, but the unfolded order. order. And that is uh, by the work of David Bohm and others. It's very remarkable how this Hindu seer 3,000 years ago or more came up with a concept that's very much matching the latest insights in quantum science. I'd like to get a little personal background about how you came on to studying the science of spirituality, the Akashic field, and quantum theory, and just go way back to your childhood where you were a classic pianist and actually performed with the Budapest Symphony Orchestra at the very young age of nine years old, and how music really influenced your interest in the universe at large. Before I had a chance to choose my life way, it was chosen for me because it was discovered that I had a talent for music. So I was a child prodigy on the piano, uh, playing public concerts with symphony orchestras and soloists from the age of nine. But then I took things into my own hands, as it were, and I developed a deep interest in philosophy and in science. My, uh, my mother was a, a piano teacher and a pianist herself. My uncle, my mother's brother, was a philosopher, so I had both sides exposed to me on, as, a, as a very young child. And then one of my teens, then I, when I left the, my country, it was after the war, Second World War. And then I, I came to New York and traveled all over America and played concerts. And but I might develop my interest in science and in the new spiritual dimensions and almost in the mystical dimensions of science was particularly key. And it intrigued me because I felt that what I'm doing on the piano when I'm entering this particular field that feels very dynamic and feels very whole and harmonious a little bit of what today we would say is an altered state of consciousness. When I do that, I somehow, I seem to be entering something that should be part of human experience, should be recognized in science, and I wanted to look around to see what does science say about that. And you came up with this terminology, the holotropic attractor, to really define that part of ourselves that has access to the greater field of consciousness through spiritual experience. Well, this uh, is a way of putting, bringing the terminology, the conceptual framework from the spiritual dimension closer or compatible, let's say, with science. Because the holotropic attractor is what gives sense and meaning and direction to the universe. So you could call it the great spirit, or you could call it the, by any of the names of divinity that we have. I try to say that it is it acts as an attractor. An attractor is, as probably most of your viewers would know, is something that in the modelers put into or uh, are used to understand how a system behaves over time. When a system evolves over time, its phase space evolves, as they say then it's, it's described in terms of attractors. Some attractors bring the system closer to a point, they are point attractors. Some of them are cyclical attractors, periodic attractors. They are also chaotic attractors. I think there's a lot of different things that we can't immediately make sense of or sort out. But the system behaves according to some things that's happening to it, that is perhaps happening in it. So I say that the world is, has, contains an attractor, which you could also call God, 
or called the Tao, called Brahma, or called the Great Spirit, but it's something which is dynamic. It's a, a kind of a force, but it doesn't, it's not like the other forces. It's pure information, it's pure uh, something that is beyond the actual physical interactions, but it acts on us. It's a nice term in quantum physics now coming forward which is information, but it's spelled with a hyphen. Information, it forms the recipient. And it's not a non-conventional field, it's not a conventional force. But it's pure information, but in the sense in which one, even that's present, like in an attractor, it's present in a certain kind of information. Then the things manifest, things show the effect of that particular attractor. They are, one would say, informed. So I called it holotropic because, you know, uh, 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 the great uh, psychiatrist Stanislav Grof uh, called, talked about the holotropic uh, breeze, breastwork, for example, breathing, because he talked holotropism as something that is very much present in the psyche. I see that it's present in the universe. Because holos means wholeness, and tropism means uh, attraction toward or a tendency toward. And I say the, there is this attractor in the universe which creates a tendency toward wholeness, toward uh, integration of elements, toward complexity, also toward harmony. All of those things that, that the spiritual people call associate with a higher entity with higher spirit, with higher consciousness. So I'm perfectly happy to call it other things, but as you know, in the history of science, there has been a great search for at least the past 200 years as to understanding what it is that gives meaning and direction to evolution. Since clearly it's not just as original it was thought, but the positivist said it's just one darn thing after another. But it's not, because it does move in a definite, identifiable direction. And so they give its various names. Alain Vital, for example, by Heinrich Bergson. The etheric force, according to... Uh, to uh, I, I'm trying to think of the name, the, the famous uh, spiritual master, uh, Rudolf Steiner, of course. And so uh, he called it an etheric force. Uh -huh. And it's yes. very interesting that even Newton, in his letters, in his private writings, which are in the British Museum, he also recognized this force, that it's active beyond the laws of nature. He called it the spirit of vegetation. By vegetation, of course, he meant uh, the veget uh, vegetation that grows, that, that develops, that can flourish, that can flower. And there is something like that in among the laws of nature that creates a, a movement toward flourishing, toward wholeness, toward higher levels of harmony. So he called it the spirit of vegetation. Now, we don't know really what would be a best name, but I am trying to be as, mod as modest about it as possible and they just call it an attractor, a holotropic attractor. I think that's what creates a, a movement toward toward wholeness, toward higher levels of harmony, toward synchrony between us and the world, and it acts on us, in us, actually. It's part of our deepest nature. In your book, Reconnecting to the Source, The New Science of Spirituality, How It Can Change You and How It Can Transform the World, many prolific authors share their own personal spiritual experiences. And so I would like to take this conversation into the personal spiritual experience and talk about how that comes about in one's life and would greatly appreciate it if you could expand upon maybe the science of spirituality behind that holotropic attractor and, and how one gets connected to it. In my own personal experience, I was working in the corporate world and very much aligned with this concept of the American dream and sort of just trying to fit into society's expectations of me. But one day just walked out into the kitchen and said, there has to be more meaning and purpose to life 
than this. And it wasn't long after that that I find myself on a mountaintop surrendering to whatever higher guidance may come. And in that moment, hear a voice resonating within me and all around me that says, can't you see you've come home? You will stay here and heal yourself and many others. I found myself in the desert of Southern California when this happened and experienced a complete transformation of my being what felt like merging with my higher self as I was aligned with my true calling in the field of spirituality. And from then on, have been very passionate about exploring science and spirituality and quantum physics. Can you explain what unfolded for me in that series of events? Well, it's certainly it's a spiritual experience. Uh, we can't explain a mystery. <laughs> but we can apprehend it, we can appreciate it, we can treasure it, and we can follow its teaching. It's ultimately, I would say, but that's sort of almost like giving away this story, but ultimately I think <clears throat> all experiences that go beyond the everyday world, beyond the capacity of our senses, uh, beyond the conventional uh, idea of who we are and what the world is. All of these are based on a, on a deeper level of reality, which is the implicate order, as David Bohm would call it, which is, which is where all things are given in harmony and, har and folded together. It's the heaven of Christian, uh, science, uh, Christian religion. It's the, the domain of the Tao in, 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 in the Oriental religions. There are many parallels to it. And it's a realm that Plato called, which is beyond the senses, which is higher than the senses. So you must think that there is more to the world than the everyday conventional world of sights and, and, and sounds and smells and tastes and textures. There is this uh, a deeper level, and this deeper level is the source. It's right now in this new book, I call it the source. And it is the Akasha, which you can just as well call the Akasha. I'm currently uh, writing a book, working on a book, that will be published sometime by the end of the year, where I join together the idea of the source and reconnecting to the source and the idea of the Akashic field. And there is very much that I learn by this effort to, to pull things together and to have a clearer understanding of just what is the case, what is happening in the world. To me, the spiritual experience is dipping into our deeper self, our own self that's which, which is in us. We are trying, we are experiencing something that is a, a spiritual dimension but actually it's a dimension, a deeper dimension of the world. Plato knew it, and the Socrates always talked about it. We know that this has, has a big philosophical and scientific background also. And nowadays we know that there is a field, it's a grand unified field of physics, which, is, which contains all of the elements, all of the, all of the particles, the, the quantum particles, the universe of particles in potential and it is from there that everything unfolds as it were so there is a recognition that there is more to the world than the surface we just experience the surface but below and behind it beyond it there is this this deeper level of where everything is connected everything is coherent it's all together and we are in a way when we are going deeper down into ourselves we perceive, we sense that coherence. Then we become, what I would nowadays say, holotropic ourselves, because we are we, we attracted, attracted to the holos in us and in the world. So the spiritual experience is a revelation of what the world truly is, beyond the surface phenomena. And this is not just imagination, because we can't explain even the presence of particles, of quarks, of, of, of nuclei, of atoms, anything of, of planets and of, of, of galaxies, we can't explain all that without taking recourse to the fact that there is a deeper level from which 
the all these things in which all these things are connected and from which we can in a way derive them we talk about deriving we talk about uh, actualizing a deeper dimension it's known as the observer effect in, in quantum physics as you know so there is definitely a, a spiritual experience which is tapping into a deeper level of reality and that deeper level is where all things are given in oneness our attraction toward it is given to us in the sense of feeling that oneness being attracted to it and is its highest and highest most intense level we feel it as love as an, uh, an uh, un universal and unrequited and totally un, uh, unconditional love and that is i think a, a, a typical uh, signal or, or sign of a deep spiritual experience that we feel this deep love for everything ourselves in the world but for all things in the world without expecting anything in return. This, you mentioned that uh, the experiences that are in my new book, on the connecting to the source. Yes, I have almost two dozen of these experiences described by the people themselves. And these people are well known in the world of the internet, in the world of science, the world of spirituality, and they are credible. And they were not told what to write at all, just to them write your own experience, what you consider is your deepest, most meaningful experience and they did without knowing about each other and they all came up practically with the same concept that ultimately it's it's this highest higher reality is the is a world where all things are given together where all things are harmonious and where we belong and where we come from and where to which to what we can connect through through this feeling which is described by this beautiful four-letter word, word, which is love. The most powerful force in the universe. <laughs> I find nice. it so fascinating what triggers that awakening in so many people where you just suddenly come to a point in your life, whether it's coming to a point of great suffering and awakening from suffering, or an awakening triggered like yourself through music but having this awakening where suddenly you are consumed with these questions about who am i and what is this reality and how am i connected to all of it and as these questions consume you and you become incredibly curious many of us for myself i dove into books and just read every book i could get my hand on about science religion spirituality quantum physics but then i also engaged in meditation and i saw in your book that one of the ways to activate your holotropic attractor is with zen buddhism and when i dove into zen buddhism and started to engage in deep buddhist meditation i really started to accelerate on my path and experience that oneness with all living things and beings taking long walks out in nature and really feeling that profound oneness and even feeling as if i was telepathically communicating with the animals and the plants <laughs> just such a profound sense of oneness and then furthermore that unconditional love that i started to feel for everyone myself and everyone around me and so just really you know resonating with what your what the guests in your book are talking about about the spiritual experience but really appreciate also the greater understanding of how and why that happens once you start to awaken i think we have the capacity to tap into this source but our everyday concerns in the life uh, in life in our existence are become uh, more powerful they mask they overwhelm this capacity we really have to withdraw as you well know in, in zen and in in the eastern spiritual arts 
one of the key commandments is to to calm your 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 consciousness, your mind, your inquiry, and just allow things to flow and to come into you. And I think if we can do that, then the experience we have will be very similar in all of us. We'll experience the higher harmony that is in, in the world and ourselves as being a part of it. If you could just use that experience to guide our behavior today, we wouldn't have these horrendous challenges and, and, and climate change and, and, and environmental deterioration in the, in the migrant crisis and all of those sort of things. We, we wouldn't have that because we would be, we would be feeling the, our harmony, feeling our oneness with others, and we will truly be trying to do to others what we expect others to do to us, act by the golden rule and know that we are destined toward a higher level of, of oneness and, and spirituality, understanding, comprehending a higher and deeper one. So just to stop the activity of what has been sometimes called the monkey mind, which you're all the time chattering, all the time you know, looking for things, all the time looking for superficial satisfaction, immediate uh, satisfaction of all money, power, sex, all the other things that are attracting us for immediately from one, from one moment to the next. And we can re relax into ourselves and then we can get to the feeling of belonging to a universe which is oriented to our love. And that is a very comforting, that is a wonderful feeling. We talk about unity consciousness, but you take it to a whole new level to say it's not just unity consciousness amongst the humans on this planetary foundation, but how our consciousness is intricately connected to the greater field of consciousness beyond our planet, beyond our solar system and galaxy, into the greater universal connection. Can you expand upon that? Well, I think the key issue here is it's one of the key points of the, uh, of the new science, of the new spiritual science, is the nature of consciousness. The classical, the conventional idea is that consciousness is produced by the brain. Somehow or other, all these new, uh, neurons find, uh, firing, interacting, create a phenomenon which we call consciousness. We don't know how it's possible, how something as, as passive and material as a set of neurons can produce something as immaterial as, 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 as mind and consciousness. This is considered a great question, a big question of consciousness studies. But besides that, we, have, we don't need to believe, we don't need to explain things by in terms of the consciousness being produced by our brain. Because if our brain doesn't produce consciousness and consciousness is still coming to us through the brain, then yes, then, conscious, then the brain transmits consciousness, not producing it. That means that consciousness is there. The idea that consciousness is in the world, that the cosmos seen from the inside as a participant in the world is a cosmic consciousness. So it's, we are not putting something in addition to the world and what there is. Just that our consciousness is a transmission, is a transformation, a translation, if you like, of the consciousness that reaches us from the world. And this is a non-local consciousness. That means that all things, all consciousness is given in every part of the consciousness. Consciousness is, to use the, the modern term, a hologram in that sense. Everything is given together. And we decode it, as it were, through our brain, through our nervous system. So if you take this point, you know, then a lot of the mysteries are dissolved. Because then we see that interconnection is a true element in the world. Different things in the world that we consider distinct elements are not separate. Because they are like projections of a hologram. The hologram is one. And, and just the projections can be many. That's one projection is not separate and separable 
from the others because they all are emanating from the same thing, from the hologram, which is a hologram-like source in the cosmos, in the, in the universe. And we are ourselves such a projection. Plato was, would have loved this term. He had been trying to describe this in his dialogues, in the allegory of the cave, for example, where we just see the, the images on a wall in front of us and we don't see the light source, which is behind us but actually the images are just shadows cast by moving patterns in, in front of the wall. So they look separate, but they are not because the light source is really one that casts it all. So I think the insights coming from the new sciences, from quantum physics and from the sciences of complexity, of, of, of system sciences, of science of wholeness, all of this reconfirm and renew again our understanding that the world is truly a seamless whole. It's an informed whole where all things interact with all other things. And that's, in a sense, the world is an Akashic whole.